How can scoliosis affect and cause pain? Scoliosis can affect the spine in many different ways. First of all, scoliosis is the development of an unnatural sideways curvature. And when there is a sideways bend in the curve to have scoliosis, it means you also have some rotation or a twist into the concavity of the curvature. A scoliosis or a scoliotic curve means the vertebral bones or vertebra have become tilted and they're tilted unnaturally, and this can cause the spine to become misaligned. And as this misalignment disrupts overall health and spinal biomechanics and function, it also introduces unnatural, uneven forces to the body. It's this introduction to unnatural forces, which can lead to many different issues. Now, scoliosis is also can be, is also categorized by different severities, meaning as scoliosis become more severe, they're more likely to cause more issues. However, there is actually no direct relationship with the size of curve and how much pain or discomfort somebody's having or how much functional issues they're having as a result of scoliosis. So one person with a very severe curve can have very little effects as a result of their scoliosis. Another person with a more mild scoliosis may have severe effects as a result of their scoliosis. The categorization regarding mild, moderate, severe does not take impact to the person's body as a categorization or as a, as a factor. It's only based upon something called the Cobb angle. The higher the Cobb angle, the, the bigger the Cobb angle number, the greater uh, degree of rotation, the more severe the condition is classified as. And it may or may not be more painful to that person depending on the size. Mild scoliosis is when the Cobb angle only is measuring between 20, 10 and 25 degrees. When the Cobb angle measures in this range, they call it a mild scoliosis. So anything from 11 degrees to 25 degrees. And it, whether the person is experiencing severe pain or no pain, it is still called mild scoliosis. Moderate scoliosis is between 25 and roughly 40 degrees. In this 15 degree window, they call it moderate scoliosis. And again, it doesn't take account impact or how the, person's, how the person's feeling or what kind of functional impairments they have. Severe scoliosis is when curves break 40 degrees, 40 plus degrees. And then I like to use a fourth category, something called very severe scoliosis. And this is when patients have 80 plus degrees of scoliosis. And all these angles refer to something called the Cobb angle. Now, is scoliosis painful for adults? Scoliosis is more common to be painful in the adult patient because this is when scoliosis progression is a result of compressive forces. Scoliosis becomes a comp compressive condition when a patient is skeletally mature, meaning they're no longer growing. And what this means is that as a result of gravity over time, the spine, the surrounding muscles, nerves, discs, and tissues are, are vulnerable to compression as a result of the uneven pressure as a result of scoliosis. The main symptom of scoliosis in the adult form is back pain. It's pain in the back or in the spine or in their spine or radicular pain throughout through, throughout their legs. The most common area is in the low back and the most, most, most common radicular pain is in the legs and feet. However, it can happen in the arms and hands, and of course, it can lead to some other issues. Muscle pain is also something that's very common in the adult uh, scoliosis patient because of this unnatural curve. The spine or the body is contracting these muscles asymmetrically to help support the unbalanced body, and this asymmetrical contracture can lead to muscle pain and muscle tightness. Adults can also experience um, some postural deviation and antalgia as a result of the pain or as a result of the scoliosis just progressing. So in the adult form, we see scoliosis pain occurring. And again, it's not related to size of curve. You can have somebody with a 25 degree curve have a lot of pain, somebody with a 40 degree curve, non, no pain, another person with a 60 degree curve have severe pain. So it's only related to that person and how they're progressing in the adult form. In the adolescent form, scoliosis is not, uh, scoliosis pain is normally not associated. Patients with scoliosis normally don't, uh, children with scoliosis normally don't feel pain. The number one diagnostic feature of scoliosis in children is postural deviation. Normally, if you see type any type of asymmetry in an adolescent, you should be concerned about scoliosis. There's no such thing as normal asymmetry. And it's, but however, it's the most common diagnosis or diagnostic feature in a patient or in an adolescent. Adolescents are normally not describing your scoliosis as painful. However, 
they could occur in young adult life. We need to go from teen when they transition from growing skeletally to non-growing. I'm defining adult and adolescent here as when they're no longer growing. So sometimes you can have some adolescents, 15-year-old girls who are no longer growing, who are considered skeletally mature, their spine can start compressing at that age and they start can start experiencing some pain. The reason why adolescents don't feel pain is because their progression is a result of growth over time. It's a result of elongating and lengthening. And they, because they, uh, they're growing and, and getting taller, it's not causing compressive forces, so therefore it doesn't lead to pain. We suspect somewhere around 10, 20% of adolescents do, resp do report some pain associated with their scoliosis, but Sometimes kids also experience pain and they don't have scoliosis. So we're not really sure if it's related to scoliosis, related to an activity, related to you know sedentary lifestyle, or related to not sitting properly, lifting properly, using technology. There's many other things that could cause pain in adolescents. So we're not 100% sure, but we think it's somewhere around 10 or 20%. And but even though every case is very unique, it's normally related to activity, like as the child performs activities, they tend to experience more pain when they rest and sleep, they wake up the next day very, very fine. It's very intermittent. It's normally not affecting their ADLs too much. They normally can do almost anything any, any patient without scoliosis can do. However, we do feel that in severe cases, very severe cases, that it's more likely to cause pain but not necessarily directly related to that. So what other type of pain can scoliosis lead to? Well, scoliosis can cause uh, many different types of issues, and the, the first thing it starts to affect is lower extremities, which it makes sense, because if you have any type of postural shift or postural deviation as a result of scoliosis, which is very common, we can start having pip pain, knee pain, ankle pain, lower extremity problems. And normally the more weight that one side takes versus the other, the more likely it's, it's gonna go through a degenerative phase. The next most common area is neck pain and shoulder tightness. We see a lot of neck pain, and this can be a result of, because as a patient develops scoliosis, very often their head will begin to start to shoot forward, and they start got something called forward head posture. When they get forward head posture, they affect the next normal healthy lordosis, and they can start to compress the nerves and discs that go through that area of the body, which can lead to pain and stiffness in that area. The neck muscles become strained and sore because they're trying to support the head that's forward, and this can lead to more discomfort in that area. Rib pain is also a very common issue that tends to occur as a result of scoliosis, especially in a thoracic scoliosis, because as the spine bends, it also rotates, and the ribs will push back on one side and forward on the other. This causes the ribs to change shape as a result of the rib arching that occurs in, in scoliosis. This can lead to muscle spasms, strained ligaments, and stiff joints, and can lead to issues occurring in, in into uh, into these patients' ribs. Uh, leg pain or radicular pain, something like sciatica, can also be a very common complication as a result of lumbar scoliosis. As the, curve lumb as the lumbar curve develops, it can compress these nerves that go down into the leg, most common the left side, and it can lead to left leg uh, sciatica or leg pain or, or numbness or weakness down into, the, into that leg. This is more common in adults than it is in children. In the most common age, we tend to see this this is around somewhere post 40 years of age as a result of the curve progressing in the adult stage. Shoulder pain can also be as a result of having uneven shoulders and having these uneven forces within the body. The shoulders will compensate, develop uneven biomechanics. It's also a result of the rib arching causes the shoulders not to work properly, so you can have shoulder pain, shoulder stiffness. And, and other associated issues with patient's shoulders. So you can see, so, uh, even though scoliosis is affecting the spine, it can have a wide effect on different parts of the body, especially as it becomes comp compressive in the adult age. Scoliosis can also affect patients' uh, head pain. It can lead to headaches. And the result of headaches can, can become so severe that they can actually get into the migraine status. And this can happen as a result of many different reasons, but the most common two is a result of cerebral spinal fluid not flowing properly as a result of the curvature. And normally when patients have these spinal curvatures, the cerebral spinal fluid doesn't flow properly and that can lead to a, a diminished amount of cerebral spinal fluid getting to the brain. 
as a result of this uh, asymmetrical curvature, we know it can also affect blood flow to the brain because the, uh, the, the arteries that go into the brain go right next to the spine and they take up the same shape the spine does. So when we have curvatures that go up into the neck, it can affect blood flow to the brain, which can also lead to headaches. And these can also cause even uh, more severe like migraines. So we know scoliosis induces uneven forces to the body and it can affect the body in numerous ways. So therefore, if you have scoliosis and you're having any type of symptoms or any type of discomfort as a result of scoliosis, we recommend treating the scoliosis when it's small. Because if you're having pain at whatever size curvature you're having, we know scoliosis progresses over time. It progresses rapidly in adolescent stage, it has a chance to, and it progresses slowly in the adult stage as a result of compression. But either way, it's progressing. And if you're experiencing it now, all we know is as curves get bigger, and if it's already causing problems, it's only more likely to cause problems to further advance and get worse over time. So treating curves at early stages normally means better results. And you want to address the underlying cause of the issue, which is normally the size of your curve, not just treat the symptoms of your scoliosis with drugs and medications. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer proactive treatments to address the size of curve, reduce the curve size, and not just treat the condition or the symptom that you're feeling yourself. And this will give you much more long lasting results and also help prevent further problems from occurring. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.